I'm Rick Hoffer. I'm the Interventional Radiology Director here at Dartmouth-Hitchcock Medical Center. And I'm also the Program Director for the Interventional Radiology Residency at um, Dartmouth and Geisel School of Medicine. Dartmouth-Hitchcock, it's a relatively small program. There's usually one senior and one junior IR resident on the service at any one time. And so even though we're only running four rooms and an interventional CT room, um, you do get your choice of the best cases and there's enough to keep you busy and interested. The work volumes are, are good, um, very heavy on the basics, the lines, the ports, the drains, the filters, the, the basics of IR, and so you do a lot of that. And there's also enough odd interventional procedures, the interventional oncology, the, neuro, the strokes, and the high-end procedures that you get at least a good exposure to that and you feel comfortable doing all that. Anyone who comes out of here is very ready to go into a private practice or a mixed practice or any sort of practice because you have the basic standard catheter guide wire skills to help you succeed doing anything you want to do. And you've had a good exposure to the clinical side that helps you know where IR fits in the um, options that any patient has, regardless of whether it's urologic, GI, or neuro. During the diagnostic radiology years, which is the first three years of IR, you're basically doing the diagnostic rotations. You're still doing a lot of inter procedure, interventional procedures on CT, even on MAMO. Um, an MSK, and on neuro. During all those, you have opportunities to do interventional procedures. And most of our residents in the past, at the end of their four years, have had five to 800 procedures under their belt of one sort or another. Um, and since we're not adding any more slots when we went to the IRDR program, the overall number of procedures is still divided the same amongst the same number of trainees. Plus, we just added another room. Our volumes increase every year by about 5% and they've been continuing to do that. So I don't think there's any lack of procedures. Right now it's just a, a, a month per year basically. Um, there is a rotation at the VA also, which may entail some IR. Um, there's a children's hospital rotation for a few months and one of those blocks could be IR. And so you do get some during those other years. A lot of fellowships in the past and a lot of IR programs had been moving toward various subspecial, subspecialty areas, moving away from vascular mainly because in the academic centers, vascular surgery has kind of adopted most of the vascular surgery. Um, here we've gotten through a lot of that and kept our training uh, complete in all areas by having the fellows do two months rotations in the, on the vascular surgery service. They do two-month rotations on the neuro IR service, maybe three now, one since fourth year and twice two months in the um, senior year. Interventional oncology is interspersed throughout. We have very close ties with North Cotton Cancer Center, which is part of the institution here. And we do uh, a, lot of, a lot of liver, tumor, HCC type work, as well as various other renal cell, um, oligometastases, some pancreatic, lung tumors. We have a pretty broad and uh, good volume of interventional oncology. Someone who's um, easygoing, um, honest, a hard worker, someone we can trust, someone who's not afraid to say they don't know if they don't know. People who are responsible, courteous and conscientious, get along with the whole team well, um, get along with referring people well. Um, just, you know, all around great person. <laughs>
with the goals and objectives of the program in a staged fashion so that we make sure we cover everything in enough depth um, so everyone gets an equal amount of training in all the particular areas. So it's more like um, incorporating that better into the program. I think that even though there's a big push for people to be 100% IR and not do IR light, and there's been some controversy about all this, but I think going forward for the near future, most of the jobs that are going to be available are going to be both IR and diagnostic. And most groups are not large enough to have complete subspecialization. And so I think you have to be interested in doing the diagnostic as well, and you have to realize that that's an integral portion of what you learn. Um, the, the, the ultrasound, the CT, the fluoro, those are, our, uh, those are our way of seeing what we're doing. And if you don't know those really, really well, you're not going to be able to be a very good interventionalist. I mean, it's, it's very intrinsic to being able to do what we do. And it kind of separates us from a lot of the other people who are doing more interventional procedures who haven't had the diagnostic radiology training. So um, just stay well-rounded and um, work hard. Hope to see you here soon.